Do you recall this from an earlier video? It's creating a white line by drawing an adjacent dark line. More crucially, when you look at the white line as you draw the dark one, the feedback from your brain to your hand is focused on the width of that white line. The white line, or whatever shape you're surrounding, has become a positive reality, and the dark line is incidental. That's negative drawing. That might at first seem to be a rather primitive and obvious notion, but that simple shift of focus can transform the way you draw. As you draw black, you need to train your eye to see white, and afford that white its true importance. That white of the paper is also the only white we have, so you need to preserve and protect it. Negative drawing achieves that. And it's the ideal tool to break down any drawing into very manageable sections. It's how I work. It is, if you like, my system. And as you're drawing black and leaving white, you're working dark to light, which usually means background to foreground. Like this. This drawing spans 16 days of work. So I'll walk you through its creation, stopping to explain areas relevant to negative drawing. First, this top left corner needs to be broken up into different elements. In the reference, it's empty and dark. But I want to create layers of depth. Layers that you can peer into and that draw you deep into the drawing. I'll work background to foreground. And I'll begin this area with the most important mark in the drawing. Absolute black. Every value in the entire drawing now has to fall between this black and the white of the paper. It is the absolute background. Everything else is in front of this dark shape. I'll invent leaves and stems and, as you'll see, unrecognisable organic shapes to add both interest and depth. I'll introduce some of those organic shapes here and push them deep into the background. Now let's move forward to the next layer and draw the first leaf. By beginning with a background leaf, I can safely experiment until I get a feel for the foliage. Immediately, negative drawing comes into play. I'm shading around the central rib and leaving it white, because I have no notion of the values required until it's surrounded by drawing. Now I can add value to that rib without guesswork being involved. This is important. You need to create areas of solid black within each local area. they are references that tell the viewer this is as far back as you can see. So it's clear that everything else is further forward. I'll try more organic shapes in this empty area. Nothing is planned, it's all spontaneous. All edges must be sharp. When you push these shapes back into the shade, those sharp edges will ensure they remain visible. I'm burnishing this with HB to remove all the white holes within the shading. They're the pits in the paper's tooth. That immediately increases the intensity of the darks. And I can use the sharp edge of the HB's chisel point to further sharpen the edges. If holes remain, I use 2H2. It's too hard to alter the values, but its fine clay content will fill the holes very efficiently. That alone both smooths and darkens, because you perceive the values to be darker when the white holes are removed. The light is shining from the top right. That's my decision and bears no relation to the reference, which is actually lit from the left. As you can see, I use circular shading extensively, using the flat face of my chisel point. That face draws soft edge lines that flow into each other for a smooth result. It allows me to sculpt the shape as the point follows the contours 
or travels in an arc from one value to another. I want the top of this leaf to go way back into the shade and the bottom to curl forwards. So I'm lightening my shading as I work down. When I say curl forwards, it's still in the background, so it needs background values. Maybe a hint of mid-ground values if it curls forward enough, but never foreground values. Everything I'm drawing in this area is in the shady background. Changing to an HB to burnish the 2B, I'm pushing that top edge deep into the shade and bearing in mind at all times that any light that can shine in here is coming from the right. I like the way the edge of this leaf in the reference is curled, so I'll keep that, but I can be as free as I like with its structure and three-dimensional form. Again, I'm working around the contours to remind myself of its three-dimensionality. But let's skip forward the way. I've decided that this area here needs to be dark, but a little lighter in this area above the butterfly's wing. It should help to make the butterfly stand out from the background. This curve is okay, but it needs something to break it, something to stop this leaf taking the viewer's eye out of the frame. So I think a new leaf just here, pointing back into the drawing will do the trick. Now, I want to fill that air with suitable interest, remembering that I can change my mind at any time. The rest, I'll invent as I draw. But I've decided that I want all of this area to be in the background. And I'm using a lot of negative drawing, beginning with the background shapes, because I know their values, and then working forwards. Use logic and lighting at each stage. The lighting is from the right, and logic will explain how each leaf interacts with the others. Here, for example, I know this leaf is behind the one above. So logically, it will be in its shade, but I can use a little reflected light to catch the edge and help the eye to separate it from the leaves around it. Now this I see as being the back of the leaf. And once again, I'm using negative drawing. Drawing around everything that is of unknown value. That allows me to concentrate purely on the three-dimensional form. I can sculpt it without confusing my mind by handling the ribs at the same time. Now, changing to HB, I can turn down those ribs so they sit comfortably in the body. This antenna needs to have smooth parallel edges, and the outline offers a buffer that I can shade up to. For this second antenna, I'm using a golfing approach, taking a few practice swings until I get a feel for the curve. Now I'm confident I can draw it accurately, I'll commit the lines to paper. Importantly, I'm looking at the white line I'm creating, and not the line I'm drawing. I've made an error here. If this is the back of the leaf, this leaf cannot be both lighter and in front. I'd like it to be lighter, so it has to be further forwards. The solution? To split the two apart. But now I've decided this smaller leaf should be in front of both and the central leaf further back, so it will help the antenna to spring forwards. But that worked out. I think promoting this leaf to the mid-ground was a good choice. Although I'm darkening the top to prevent it from taking your eye out of the frame, the lighter lower end now points nicely to the butterfly. I've moved on a step or two. Just to recap before I move on again, the way the negative drawing system works is, you start with the background, which needn't be black, in this case it is, but it helps if it includes your darkest value. Then, when you move forward to the next layer, you can either make it stand out from the background, or you can push it back into it. Because the background already exists, you can physically push it back into the shade. 
And then when you finish this and move forward again, you've got exactly the same facility. You can decide if this leaf is merging back into the background with this one or really standing out sharply in front of it. For example, I'm going to push this end right back behind this one and let it come forward into the light a bit, which will help to break up an uninteresting area. I'm also going to let it pick up a little highlight along this edge because I think that edge is tipped up. I don't want it to be too sharp or over detailed because it's in the background. I'll give it a touch of HB to smooth it out and oh, oh I like that. A little highlight has appeared along that edge. You should really be looking for these happy accidents all the time. In fact, I prefer that highlight to this one. So I'll almost take this one out. Right, we've moved on and the foreground work is about to begin. I've decided to start with an F grade because it draws more smoothly than an HB. F sits between HB and H and stands for fine point. Again, I'm sculpted in three dimensional form that I perceive this leaf to have. That's the general approach, so let's move on to a more descriptive leaf. I thought our previous leaf would cast a shadow on this one, but I've decided it's not essential, so this leaf now depends entirely on negative drawing. Apart from minimal planning of the ribs, everything is being created as I draw. That gives me a great deal of freedom to interpret. But you must remember to always ask yourself how the light will affect the area you're working on. The shading needs to be so subtle that it's taking me some time to get a good feel for these foreground leaves. So I'll be adjusting them from time to time. Again, I'm using blue tack to adjust the top layer without affecting the layers beneath. Then my blender, a painter's colour shaper, and the final smoothing and removes white from the ribs. That's important because leaves don't naturally contain white and I want to reserve white for the butterfly. So this is the point we've reached and it's time to make a start on the butterfly. As usual, the first job is to fade the guidelines and I don't ever treat these guidelines as being accurate. They just mark the positions this is not a scientific illustration, so I can freely interpret and make any changes that I think will better suit the drawing. I'll make a start here and get a feel for the form and texture. Stippling might help, but I'm not convinced it will help that much. In any case, I'll try marking a bar or two to get a feel for those. What I'm doing here is practicing the line then tone method of working. The idea is that you put the detail in first, which is almost always line based. And now with the line in place, the tone can be added on top using the flat face of the point for soft edge lines. Now I have a major problem. I had to stop work on this because there's something completely missing. The rear edge of both wings. I was using this reference to plan the structure of the wing. I worked my way down here, as you can see, past this first spot. Down to the point, which is here. And then, oh, all of this is missing. This wing has been torn off roughly around this area. This is the reference I was working with. And this is what it should look like. I repaired this photo using a different butterfly. So shall I continue drawing with the damaged wing or do I repair it? Well, I've decided to use it as a positive learning experience and repair it. As there's no time like the present, let's start cutting into the leaf. I'm getting close now to needing an eraser. 
Now bear in mind that as soon as you use an eraser, you are probably flattening the tooth or altering the structure of the paper. Well, I think I have the shape about right. And indeed I have. The wings are complete. Just the body to draw. And it's finished. Now all that remains is to sharpen a few edges. Push some parts of the foliage deeper into the shade. And here the organic shapes are looking a little too lattice-like. So I'll cut a new leaf shape into it. And then push that back into the deep shade. And we're done. I wasn't flitting from area to area, so I gave myself plenty of time to properly consider each element as I drew it. I wasn't starting light and gradually darkening, so I didn't have to redraw again and again, which destroys the freshness of the drawing. However complex the drawing, I find negative drawing to be an absolute blessing. It's a must have for your armory. You know your full tonal range right from the outset. You can break the composition down into smaller and smaller manageable elements, which makes keeping control so much easier. You can concentrate purely on one section and easily work out shadows as you progress. As you move forward through the layers, every element is surrounded by the environment in which it exists. It removes any need to erase back to white, which is never completely successful. And of course, negative drawing is our white pencil. It protects and preserves our only available white until we know without any shadow of doubt what we need to do to it. And to learn more about the wonders of negative drawing and much more, explore all the videos with me at drawwithmike.net where I can answer all your questions on the support forum. And subscribe here to my channel for more drawing tips and tricks. Mm -hmm.